It's a nightmare scenario. Gang members more violent and even tougher to take down because of the training we give them. A growing number of gang bangers, gang bangers are joining the military. And as Chris Blackford tells us, when these guys return to the street, they're much more dangerous. This AWOL Marine out of Camp Pendleton, also a gang member, waits with a deadly SKS assault rifle hidden under his serape. He's on a twisted, self-ordered mission to kill a police officer. He is 19-year-old Lance Corporal Andres Raya, high on cocaine and hatred for cops. From this liquor store in the small town of Ceres near Modesto, Raya calls in a fake report that shots have been fired. Two officers respond to the scene, taking a tactical position behind a nearby wall. Raya sees them, raises his rifle, and starts firing. Using a military tactic called slicing the pie, he advances around the corner, aggressively finding his target to make the kill. 49-year-old officer Sam Rhino goes down, severely injured. Return fire from the second officer drives Raya back, but is far from over. He spots a third officer coming from another direction. Again, using his military training, he takes the attack right to his target. 39-year-old Sergeant Howard Stevenson, armed only with a handgun, is killed. SWAT Sergeant Craig Plant arrives and doesn't like what he sees. This isn't just somebody that's firing wildly and doesn't know the, the weapon. Plant joins other cops, setting up a perimeter, looking for Raya. But here in this alley, Raya finds them. The blade and Sergeant Joe he Camarda presented as little of uh, smaller profile of himself as he moved across the alleyway. He came towards us, which was incredible. I mean, he gained about 30 or 40 yards towards us until he was finally uh, knocked down. In a safe at the dead Marines' home, investigators find photos of Raya flashing Norteño gang signs, a video of him and his homies, graffiti and a book that celebrates the gang lifestyle. Stanislaus County Sheriff's Lieutenant Bill Hines. So it, it pretty quickly became evident that we were dealing with a Marine who was a gang member. He says police are not trained to engage gangsters with military expertise. Meanwhile, there is growing evidence of gang members in the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. And this former Marine, an Asian gang member known as Shady, agreed to talk to us if we did not reveal his true identity. Well, what else are you learn? Four tactics. Come on, the war school itself. For free. You don't even get paid for it. While stationed at Camp Pendleton, police say Shady, with a King Cobra Boys tattoo on his leg, instructed his homeboys back in Orange County how to set up a military-style ambush. Not even being infantry, I learned weapon usage, line of fire, movement. I was taught that every morning. And here in the parking lot during a dance at Fountain Valley High School, police say this 15-year-old gang member known as J-Bone shot up this van and a rival gangster's car, Shady telling the others how to position themselves for tactical advantage. A bunch of King Cobra boys went to jail. Shady, who spent four years in prison for his part in it, believes other gangsters are now joining the military just to learn about weapons and tactics. I guess Marines, why they join Marines? To shoot guns, blow things up. And now you've got gang members doing that. Yeah. And there's no doubt in your mind that they intend on taking that back to the street. There's good percentage. And not only are the gang members learning weapon skills and tactics in the military, with the war in Iraq, they are also getting full combat experience in urban-style warfare. T.J. Layden, a former neo-Nazi skinhead who was in the Marines, says it's scary. Now you got a guy who's fully trained in the military, who's been through combat, who knows what murder and, and, and killing is like. And gangsters in the military don't seem to feel any need to hide their affiliation. This dance floor is full of gang members flipping gang signs to the beat of gangster rap. It's an Army NCO club on base at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. That's an example of a situation out of control, and that, that's, that's frightening. Detective Hunter Glass, an Army veteran who works the gang beat for the nearby Fayetteville Police Department, is concerned. It's very, it's very popular to be a gangbanger or be a thug. Thug life. 
that's going to transfer right down into the military. That's all. Devin Dozier is a 103rd Street underground crip from South Los Angeles. He's known as Tiny Whack and is in the Army at Fort Lewis, Washington. It's, it's amazing. Investigators found more than 40 items of gang paraphernalia in his room on base. Scott Barfield is a Defense Department gang detective. Oh, definitely. You know, it's one of the scariest things that we've seen. Also on Barfield's list, there's Felipe Tellez, a Florencia 13 gangster from Huntington Park, known as Dreamer Boy. Kevin Nicholson, a gangster disciple from Georgia. James Adrianson, a Norteño from Springfield, California. Just here at Fort Lewis, investigators during the past several years have identified more than 300 gang members in as many as 43 different gangs. And like Maximino Lucky Valdez, an East Side Longo gangster from Long Beach, many have been shipped out to fight in Iraq, where signs of gang graffiti say investigators are becoming more and more prevalent. Retired L.A. County Sheriff gang expert Richard Valdemar, a Vietnam vet, calls it dangerous. And now uh, they maintain their, their allegiance to the gang even when they join the, you know, the military. That's the problem. Remember our fallen comrades. That's not to tarnish the reputation of the vast majority of thousands of military men who serve with honor. But there's a growing concern that what gangsters are learning about warfare will eventually end up with more bloodshed on the streets of America. Chris Blatchford, Fox 11 News. A dozen parole sex offenders are being housed on the grounds of San Quentin.